Hello, this is James Berger with the Bakersfield, Californian, and we are here with Off the Press, our political talk show on this Wednesday afternoon. And uh, joining me as my co-host today is Russell Johnson, former city uh, council person and uh, government affairs co coordinator and counselor here. Uh, and we have our special guest today, Wendy Reed, who is running for the 23rd Congressional District. And uh, she's here to talk to us about herself, her background, and her race. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, James. So, uh, Wendy, you're you've you've got a uh, you're a Democrat running for the uh, the the twenty thirty, uh, which is held by uh, Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Uh, but uh, he's we know him fairly well around here, but we don't know you so well. So, can you give us a little bit about your background, uh, kind of where you grew up, where you went to school, uh, what you've done with your life, and what you're doing with your life right now uh, when you when you aren't running for Congress? <laughs> well, we can work backward. Okay, sounds great. <laughs> First of all, um, I have spent the past 30 years in our district engaging people in our district in government processes. Uh, it started out uh, that Los Angeles County, which is at the bottom of our district, uh, wanted to pile sludge in the Western Valley that would blow eastward uh, across the rest of us. And of course, they hold the hearing at 10 in the morning on a Tuesday. And uh, so I showed up to speak on behalf of the children uh, and future generations who could not speak on behalf of themselves. And we did end up defeating that. Um, I worked engaging people in elections for many years, running uh, election precincts. I got uh, disaster preparedness supplies and off-road riding supplies for the PALS kids over at Hungry Valley. And over and over, I found myself uh, helping to engage people in land use planning processes that affect our property values, our enjoyment of our property, uh, as our son grew older, I was able to go back, complete my college education at Cal State Bakersfield, and I then went on to a master's degree in public administration at Cal State Northridge. And uh, from that, uh, we ended up uh, doing a couple of things. First of all, forming a nonprofit corporation uh, that preserves natural habitat lands and operates a state authorized implementation program for mitigation. Uh, so when uh, developers or government agencies are required by other government agencies to fulfill uh, mitigation, we are an authorized entity through di due diligence to uh, uh, go ahead and implement that, uh, preservation and restoration projects. Through that role, I have worked with uh, cities, with both counties of Kern and Los Angeles, uh, recently even with San Bernardino County, and um, I have really gotten my feet wet to understand uh, how the average citizen in America has very limited voice compared to uh, the people that we as uh, local residents perceive to be the people in power. Uh, largely, these are uh, companies and very rich people who can contribute to uh, uh, politicians. Uh, this year, I decided that uh, it would be just untoward for Mr. McCarthy to be on the ballot alone. We had to have another candidate that's American, we should have a choice. And uh, I am qualified uh, to run, and so I, I, I chose to run. But I don't consider myself a politician. Uh, I don't enjoy politics in any way, shape, or form. I do consider myself, obviously, a candidate, and I see it as, as governance. I see it as a process of self-governance, and that's where my background in, you know, my master's in public administration kind of comes in, and my experience in terms of of engaging people with government entities. Wendy, you're going to want to talk right into that yeah. microphone. You're kind of far away from it, and we right. want to make sure we pick up what you say. But um, Thank so you. you. Thank you, Russell. Yeah, I will. No problem. You mentioned you went to uh, Cal State Bakersfield for your master's? No, for my bachelor's. For your bachelor's. And you got uh, you got your, did you go to the Antelope Valley campus, or did you come to the Bakersfield campus? Uh, both. Okay. And you also have video classes. I had wonderful oh. economics classes that were uh, via video Excellent. to the AV campus. I, I was interested in that because I went to uh, BC and then I went to UC Santa Barbara. So I didn't know, how, and I know they have an Antelope Valley campus, so I didn't know if you could get your 
your four-year degree over there if you had to come over to this Well, I actually well. had three years at Northwestern University, Medill School of Journalism, oh. uh, prior to uh, transferring. Uh, the transfer process was, uh, was very interesting. You have evaluators at Cal State Bakersfield, and uh, they told me Northwestern was an out-of-state school. And so transferring the credits was very challenging. I had one which was uh, 425A and 425B, which were two American history classes. Uh, the first was the history of the colonies through the Revolutionary War, and the second was like, you know, from the Revolutionary War through the War of 1812. And she claimed that the first was not uh, American history, it was Emma A. in history. And I said, well, what's Emma A.? And she said, I don't know, but it's not American. So we read the uh, description, the course description, and it said uh, the history of the British colonies from uh, the pre-revolutionary <laughs> war to the Revolutionary War. And I said, well, doesn't that sound like American history to you? And she said, no, those are the British colonies. <laughs> so we actually had to elevate that to the dean. Uh, and uh, and I, I met with them up in Bakersfield. They said, we're very sorry, Mrs. Reed, but yes, you will be getting credit for that transfer class. So. Um, yeah, it, it, there were wonderful professors at Cal State Bakersfield, and uh, it's a beautiful campus. The AV campus is really quite nice, and I felt that, um, that I had really excellent my, – my bachelor's was in communication, and uh, Mr. Murray was also a teacher at Loyola Mel Marymount, and he was exquisite and incredibly tough. Uh, so anybody that thinks that, um, you know, California state schools are a uh, piece of cake, no. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I am one of the smarter kids, though. I, I am an A student, and uh, when I went back, I had to take some prerequisites before going on to Cal State. I had to take prerequisites at the community college, and um, and, and some of the kids there that literally were kids, you know, at, at the community college, and there I was, I think, in my 30s or 40s, and, um, uh, and, and they would say, well, if you're grading on the curve, can't you leave Wendy out? <laughs> so... <laughs> you, you know, when I, when I was at BC and I was in student government, um, the, we had a term to refer to students who had gone and then actually come back or maybe never went to uh, college and then started maybe later in life, and they were called reentry students. And that was kind of the, the term that was thrown around. But uh, it was always the reentry students that were always focused. They were always yeah. getting the good grades. And it was always <laughs> the, the young, like, didn't know what they wanted to do, trying to figure out if they wanted to be a history major, a business major, a nursing major. The oh were yeah, the ones when, that I, always when I went to college, it was like, wow, this is great. I don't know, okay, I'm making it through. I'm, I did fine. I yeah. passed all my classes. I win. Um, but uh, good degrees, yeah. Yeah, if I went back today, it would be a different, uh, different world completely, I think. Something uh, about uh, living a little bit longer and valuing your time and focus of uh, the – benefits you can get from putting that focus in is just interesting. So what drove you to Northwestern University? How did you end up there? And then how did you find your way back into the congressional district? Um, I got into Stanford, which was my first choice school out okay. of four. And, um, but I didn't get in on the early admission. I got into Northwestern on the early admission. And when I told my dad, jumping up and down, I got into Stanford. I'm going to California. You know, it was the 70s. And Everybody on the East Coast wanted to go to California. I wanted to go to California, and I wanted to go to Stanford. And my dad said, no, I've already paid the deposit at Northwestern. So uh, oh. that was that. Um, you know, I think that uh, dads as a whole uh, have evolved over the decades. Uh, my we like dad to think so, don't we, Russell? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, I would certainly hope so. <laughs> uh, but my dad was uh, was uh, uh, always knew best for me, and I did what my dad said. And uh, hated Chicago, hated really the whole Midwest and the weather in Chicago was just brutal. And uh, Where are so you from originally? New York City, okay. Upper West Side. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Chicago. Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't crazy for Chicago. But I did get to play music with Muddy Waters. Well, there you and go. I opened for Bonnie Raitt before she was uh, big. And so, so that that was fun. So are you I think while I was at Northwestern, I probably majored in drinking beer and uh, playing music. So it sounds like you're a musician. What do you play? I was a musician. I, I really can't call myself much of one anymore. I used to play piano and guitar and bass and 
We had bands together. I started uh, being a musician when I was actually about 10 and a half. I was a young entrepreneur, and I built a uh, puppet theater and hired three other girls. I hired three other girls, and we took care of children's parties. We developed a theme and did the shopping and supervised mm. the party, did the decorations, uh, put on the puppet shows. I sang and wrote the scripts, and they worked the puppets. And uh, the third girl went ahead and, you know, watched the kids. And uh, then we did the pin the tail on the donkey, and then the mothers would come down into the basement where the rec room was, and uh, they'd have the cake and take photos and open presents. And then the kids would go home and we'd clean up. And for that, we made darn good money in 1960s money. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it. And, and what did you call this business? <laughs> oh, did you ever gosh. Know it? Really, you expect me to know this after 47 years? Um, I have no idea what we call this, but, uh, it, you know, something about, you know, party planners or, you know, something like that. We had a little ad in the local paper and oh. people <laughs> called us. Sometimes cool. we had two or three parties every weekend. Wow. That's, yeah. That's, Saturdays that's, that's and, and Sundays. Speaking as the, uh, father of a young kid, uh, that's a great business model and it, uh, people who do that are pretty awesome. Thank you. I am pretty awesome. That's why I'm running for Congress. There you go. There you go. <laughs> nice so, segue. Nice you know, it's, it's actually pretty interesting because your opponent has kind of a similar little right. story about his business he started, and which we'll probably get into a little bit later. But it's it's kind of interesting. You, well, you I've both heard have that varying stories about his business. Right. Yeah, the Kevin yeah. O's Deli. Yeah. 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 So tell me, um, you went to Northwestern, you found your way over to. Uh, to Lancaster, Palmdale area, Antelope Valley. What brought you to California, though, eventually? You, you well, were, because you said I you always wanted to, wanted to go to California. <laughs> uh, so I came to California. I mean, that's basically how it works. Uh, first, I landed in San Bernardino County, and the air was horrible. Uh, and I was commuting to downtown LA. I worked in legal firms and uh, as a legal secretary. I was a computer geek. Uh, in 1978, I purchased uh, the very first Trash 80 Model 3 and, uh, and programmed. This is back when, uh, if you wanted it to print to the screen, you just said print. But if you wanted it to go to a printer, which was considered a peripheral yeah. device, I don't know if you remember that I terminology, do. you had to type L print. Um, I worked display writers, uh, mag card machines. Uh, it all kind of stemmed from the development of the electronic typewriter. Uh, and then, of course, the advent of the uh, display writers and wangs and laniers, uh, dedicated word processors. Um, the Apple II came out, which we used for accounting. Um, and I just, I just absolutely, uh, the, the Bakersfield Californian actually misquoted me by saying that I fell in love with the office work or something. No, I fell in love with computers, mm. okay? And okay. a lot of us have fallen in love with computers. Story. No, you did not, sir. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and all of, uh, all of us now have little, you know, Star Trek communicators in our pockets because of the space race and because of the development of computers. And I abs I still love computers. I'm still fascinated by the whole, uh, process. I went from word processing and spreadsheets to database uh, development and building and management uh, to graphic design. And ultimately, uh, I moved from legal firms uh, to working in aerospace. Um, and uh, when I got a promotion uh, out of the Antelope Valley area to Edwards Air Force Base with SAIC Corporation, um, really from a career move, it was wonderful. And I was very honored to be offered the administrative promotion. But at the same time, we had a small child. And I really didn't want to be out at Edwards until 9 o'clock at night, six, mm. seven days a week, you know, being an, an administrator. Um, and, uh, and we decided that I, I should go into business. I had done some freelancing, doing these kind of secretarial services and graphic design, and I started a little business and uh, worked that business for many years. Um, clients would come into my house, and uh, when our kid uh, got a little older and got to work on the computer himself, uh, he actually would sit and go, mimicking 
the sound of the typing, the rhythm <laughs> of the of the typing that mom did, you know, <laughs> her that, work. That, gotta love kids. And he ended up working. He's he's actually 25 years old now, and he works at an advertising agency, oh, which wow. is just kind of full circle. He was going to be an actuary, and um, okay. uh, but he went and interviewed at an ad agency, and one of the guys upstairs had a dog, and Pandora music was playing, and there were young people like him. <laughs> I think he and thought that that would be a better place to work, and, and it's been a wonderful place. And for advertising him. can be exciting, so yeah, and it is. And he built my website. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. It's <laughs> nice to have friends and family. Yeah. Plug, plug. So, so, so you speak DOS, obviously. Yes. And um, <laughs> or Edlin. And, 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 that, and that is very hard to understand if you don't speak that language, but. You also speak this like government language because you started a habitat conservation fund or qualified habitat conservation nonprofit. That's a very difficult task to do, but it's very needed and necessary. How did you do that? Like, what steps did you have to run through? Because normally they're either f founded by some sort of a government entity or it's a large nonprofit that's kind of put it together, like Sequoia Lands Trusts or. One of these, how did you start it, and how did you keep it local out in the Antelope Valley? Russell, thank you. <laughs> just just thank you. Okay? Well, I used to be on the thank planning commission. Thank you for commission, understanding. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, and I used to cover the planning commission, so there's a uh, little geekery in the room here. <laughs> um, you know, I guess I did it the way that I do everything, which is... Um, you know, you take that first step forward and uh, take a leap of faith, and it'll work out okay. Stick to a, a strong foundation, a foundation of law, bylaws, policy, regulation. Make sure that the foundation is strong. Make sure that it is a democratic process, that you have open membership, open people to the board, open information to everybody who's involved so everybody's getting the information and they're getting it in time to read it before the meeting <laughs> so that they can actually sleep on it and actually have intelligent response. Um, and by doing that, I think that, that uh, it, it, it worked out. Um, I believe in community-managed uh, processes, whether they be government processes or non-governmental organizations as a nonprofit corporation. Uh, but I think that every time you, um, you limit things uh, to not being part of the public process, you are shortchanging uh, the whole potential when of, you don't of, what could, don't uh, of what could happen. Alrighty, I, I think we're going to need to shift off to a break for just a bit, and then we will be back, because I, I think we should continue this conversation, because it's interesting, and I think uh, both Russell and I have seen some uh, how this works, and I think it would be good for people to understand what happens with these kinds of conservancies. So, uh, again, this is James Berger, Russell Johnson, and Wendy Reed. We're on Off the Press today. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes to continue our conversation.